podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, welcome to today's Advanced Design Twilight webinar. Um, today, we're going to be looking at uh, the work ultimate concrete workflow. Okay, so the workflow for concrete design. Um, this webinar was going to take place, yeah, place yesterday, but due to um, technical difficulties we're having with the content, we've had to show this one today, and the steel connection one was shown yesterday. Okay, so if anybody wanted to see the steel one and you missed it, um, please keep an eye out on our content center. The recording of that session will be uploaded. Okay, so once again, welcome to the webinar. So for those of you who are not uh, quite familiar, my name is Jamil Dida, and I'm going to be presenting this webinar for you today. I'm one of the application engineers here at Grey Tech, and I am responsible for, for providing um, webinars, training, um, demonstration around our structural products, and also offering technical supports for these products. So before joining Grey Tech, I have served as a structural engineer in the industry for a number of years, and I have designed um, various um, design um, elements for various projects. I've worked on projects um, across many sectors, um, just to name a few, residential, educational, and retail. I have also included um, this handout. So this handout is also available. So you can download this handout, and you have direct links then um, to connect with me on LinkedIn and also to send me an email to jamil.dida at greytech.com. So once again, more about the Grey Tech Content Center. So this is uh, where all the webinars for this week um, will be uploaded. Okay, so all the recorded webinars you'll find on here. So um, apart from <clears throat> the advanced design webinars, uh, this is the go-to place to um, have access to those industry workflows which we'll share with you, um, some best practices, and also tips and tricks from some of our experts from the AEC manufacturing and structures industry. So please allow up to two weeks for these webinars uh, to be uploaded to our Great Tech Content Center. An overview of what we're going to be covering today. So to start with, we're going to be looking at um, the uh, model in Revit. Okay, so this is where we'll have a look at the analytical model. Um, this model will already have loads applied, uh, load cases applied in Revit. We'll then look at exporting this through to advanced design, where we will then um, perform a FEM analysis and have a look at some of the results. And then with those results, we can then look at uh, importing it back into Revit with those uh, uh, FEM results. And then using those FEM results, we will design the rebar cages. Okay, so auto design the rebar cages for some of the members, the beams, uh, some columns as well. Okay. So uh, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's session. It's time again to get started. So the workflow, what does this workflow look like? So typical workflow I'm going to be showing today um, will be going from uh, Revit to Advanced Design, where we look at the frame results. Frame results go back into uh, Revit, and then from those Revit um, frame, frame results, we can generate reinforcement cages in Revit through the use of the Power Pack. Now, the Power Pack is um, the tool, great tech tool, which sits between Revit and Advanced Design provides that communication between both of our um, products, Advanced Design and Revit, okay? So with the Power Pack, you can import, export models, and also use the Power Pack for detailing and designing. So that is the workflow we're going to be looking at today. So let's get started uh, with the demonstration. So here I have a uh, structure in Revit, okay? Story concrete structure. We can see we've got some columns, uh, uh, some pad footings, some slabs, and also we have some shear walls in there. 
Okay, nice model that we have here. Right, uh, we also have a series of um, plans, a case of floors uh, zero to six, you can see here, several floors. And let's take a look at the analytical model. So this already has some loads applied to it in Revit, and here's our analytical model that we're looking at right now. If I click on one of these um, loads as well, we can see what the density is. If I go over to having a look at the load cases, so here we have a dead, we have dead loads, live loads, seismic loads, and some modal loads as well on there. So it's a relatively fully loaded model that we have here. Time now to look at some of the loads. So up here we have a live load, for example, of 1.5 kilonewton a meter squared. Okay, and that's applied to all of the floors. Now, with the power pack, which I was talking about earlier, we have a range of tools. With the BIM Connect, uh, we can import and export models between Advanced Design and Revit. We've also got the option to uh, synchronize. Okay, so synchronizing is where we simply synchronize the model for any changes rather than having to reopen models. So we're using the same model almost um, from concept through to design. Okay, so that's the idea we have here. Uh, let's look at now the some of the settings that we use for concrete mapping. Uh, we can let's launch this automatically in advanced design. So rather than exporting, we can automatically open this in advanced design. Okay, so in this case, I'll create some mapping for this material. Okay, let's just quickly put some a grade in there. There we go. You might pick up a few other members as well. Okay. So it's uh, supporting area loads. There's a cast in place material. But I'm not too concerned about these. Okay, there is quite a few of these in this model. Um, if we say no here, we also have the opportunity for mapping when it comes to advanced design as well. Okay, so now it should be loading in advanced design. Let's give it a few moments. Okay, so here we have now the model in advanced design. So this is what it has exported. The export log usually tells you so beams, columns, footings, walls, and slabs, along with those loads that we looked at. Okay, so there we go. We have an option to assign a material to this. Um, I'm going to assign a concrete grade to this cast in place gray material. So I'll select C3545 for this one and assign it. Okay, so you can see. A relatively simple process that we've uh, gone from Revit now to Advanced Design. So now let's let Advanced Design do the hard work for us in terms of analyzing this structure now. So now we can see, let's have a look at it in Advanced Design. Okay, turn off this work plane. Right, so what do we have here? So we have the floors exported as well. Okay, all, all the subsystems as in the way it was modeled. It's all separated into columns, walls, and slabs. Uh, let's have a look at the loads. Yeah, there we go. We have our loads as well. We have a series of dead loads, live loads as well. And we can see some seismic loads and modes there as well. There we go. There is that uh, 1.5 kilonewtons a meter squared load that we have on uh, the slab there. At the bottom, we have uh, the footings. If I click on this, it has actually footed, um, imported that square footing, so 1.6 by 1.6 meter square, although it's just shown as a uh, point support. It has uh, exported those footings there. Over in the combinations then, again, these have already been generated uh, and carried through from Revit. So we have around 15 combinations here for the analysis. Um, now, let's have a look at uh, over analysis. We can verify the structure, so it's always good to verify for any errors. Time now to take this through to the analysis. So as first of all, let's have a look at the FEM results. 
So that's what we're interested in. Okay, so it's running the meshing now. So all the mesh um, is being generated in advanced design here. Now, once it generates the mesh, from the settings, you have an option to also export meshed elements uh, through to Revit as well. So you can make use of that meshing as well when it comes to uh, <clears throat> defining um, defining those rebar cages. Okay, so we're now looking at saving those results. Should be near the end now. Okay, and we have a finished calculation. So let's uh, now, for example, take a look at some of these results, see what they look like. We have uh, the displacements here, for both linear and plane elements. So we're looking at around about 32 millimeters displacement there due to dead load. Okay, and a lot of that is, you can see, uh, located around that shear core. Okay, nice animated action there to see what's going on. Let's also look at some forces. So let's choose a ULS combination in this case. Uh, moments YY for the slabs and the shear walls. Okay, so these are the moments that we're looking at. Okay, so, so if I isolate some of these columns now, let's have a look at the reactions. It's also interesting to know uh, what the reactions looks at, look at like at the basis. So I've isolated the columns. I will also need to do the footings. So I'll hide the columns now and have a look at the footings. Okay, post process. So for the ULS case here, let's uh, turn on the value. And we can see that on some of these, so around, around about where that shear core was, you can see that the loads are a lot higher. Get towards the front, a lot lower because uh, there's only a few stories up the front there. Okay, so they were our reactions. And we can turn the mesh off here. Okay, transparent mode always. Helps if you want to look at the 3D model and results at the same time. So let's launch the RC design now to have a look at the some of the concrete results on the slab. So we, once this is finished, um, we'll pick a slab and then we'll have a look at some of the concrete results on that. So let's run this again. Um, so it's no cases selected. Okay, in this case, we need to. This is, again, that means it's a simple case of uh, going back to the combinations. And I think the concrete combinations haven't been defined in this case. So that is something which has to be done. An element has to be done manually here. So it's carried through the main combinations. But we just need to add these combinations for the concrete analysis now. Okay, so select all of them. Let's put them all there for the concrete analysis and time now to rerun that uh, reinforce analysis okay we'll run it again okay so it's running the machine I'll also be using the new, um, the 2022.1, the new ISO map uh, way of displaying the results. So I will pick a slab and with the uh, mesh turned on, we can see um, exactly what the values look like in each cell. Okay, so we can really localize um, the results for a certain area on the slab. Okay.
So we now have some results. So if we look at the crack width for this slab here, we'll pick the top slab and we'll just isolate this slab. Switch to a top view. That's better. Now let's take a look at these crack widths. Okay, so the crack width we're looking at maximum is around 0 0.17, 0 0.2, so it's under that 0.3 millimeters. Okay, so we are okay for that. And if I turn on the values for the diagrams, and now if I zoom in, I can take a closer look to see what these values look like. Um, locally on these hotspots, so 0.2 where the red regions are. If I change the working units to uh, two decimal places, then I can probably see values which are more uh, a little more precise. So time now for the reinforcement. This is um, the required reinforcement we're looking at now. So the required reinforcement, okay, um, area in the y direction in the bottom of this slab. So the maximum is around 5,000. Almost 6,000 millimeters squared a meter. If I then choose to look at the ISO map, so the new ISO map, this will help me look at it a little better. Okay, so now we have those regions there. Okay. If we wanted to, we could take this even one step further um, by using peak smoothing. So in advanced design, there's an option to uh, smooth results, okay, to um, iron out any peaks as well, to avoid over design. That's something we can do. So, here we're looking at design efforts, and we also have some uh, ratios. Let's have a look at some concrete stresses or the deflection. So, the deflection, total deflection on slabs, okay, it's not really showing anything for that one. Um, perhaps if we look at concrete stresses. Let's have a look at these stresses. Okay, around 11 newtons a millimeter squared. It really helps now. If I wanted to, we could even refine this mesh even further. So at the moment, it's a, a set at one by one. But if we reduce, uh, increase that, we'd have obviously more nodes on this slab and uh, more results. Okay, it would take obviously longer to analyze, but you may get uh, results which are more precise. Over in the Manage tab, if we go to the application settings, here in the, um, if we go to Grey Tech BIM, here we have some options. We get control of what gets exported back on its way to Revit. So we can export the mesh model, uh, export the forces on the linear elements. So all of these forces that we've calculated and the theoretical reinforcement as well. Okay, so that's quite handy. And now let's look at exporting this back to Revit. Let's export this as a GTCX. And then on the Revit side, we'll look at uh, synchronizing this. <clears throat> Save it in a uh, accessible location. So I'll call the results from advanced design. Okay, so it should have been done by now. We can just double check. Okay, so in the command line, I've got it selected on errors. That's why it's not showing. If I click on information, it will probably show uh, the DTCX has been created successfully. Anyway, let's go over to Revit and now synchronize the results that we have in advanced design. So this will then compare the values that we have in the Revit model against the GTCX from advanced design. So it will compare any changes in materials, um, any section sizes, um, and anything to do with the geometry, it will uh, synchronize and also the loads okay so if i change any loads it will also uh, bring those through so let's load the changes that we've just saved 
So results from advanced design. Okay, so seeing some now we can see from here the FEM results are available. So it's picked up the FEM results from advanced design and some reinforcement. So that is due to the theoretical reinforcement. So both of these are now available. I can choose to accept all of these changes in one go, or I can narrow it down in terms of modified, deleted, or unchanged, as you can see on the legend there. So I can do these step by step or select them all in one go. So it's down to me what that looks like. So it's sometimes more manageable to break this down, but I'm going to accept all of this uh, in just one go. Let's apply these changes. And then we'll look at, uh, with the results manager, um, how to use these the results to generate the cages and what that can do for us. Okay, uh, we won't print synchronization report in this case. Okay, so that's disappeared now. Okay, so, right. So now let's look at uh, the results manager. Okay, so nothing's there anymore now. So if we go to analyze with the results manager, we can see there is a theoretical model, theoretical enforcement and analysis results. Okay, and it says if they're up to date or not. So let's explore these results now. From here, we can have a look at the analysis results. So we can have a look at, for example, the moments that have been carried through from advanced design. You can pick your um, um, combinations as well. So all your results are available through there. Okay, so now we want to look at uh, also generating the reinforcement as well. So back to the 3D model where we have some beams and problems. Okay. So if I zoom in just a little closer and pick one of these beams here, so we can see there the beam sizes there. Okay, and if I were to change these section sizes, again, these will be carried through as well. Okay, so time now to pick a column. So if I select one of these columns, we can see here you've got columns, beams, and uh, a slab here, and some shear walls. Okay. So with the power pack, you've got power pack design detailing as well. So let's import those uh, loads of combination from the results. Okay. So it's currently holding these results and it's just a case of importing them now. So when I import these, I can use those imported results to generate the reinforcement gauge. So now they've imported. Let's have a go at calculating the reinforcement cage on this column. So let's select this key, uh, column, sorry, and then over to Power Pack Design. So these are very similar commands that we have to AutoCAD as well. Let's load them on this. Uh, so these are the combinations and internal efforts from our analysis in advanced design. So this is what the enforcement will be designed for. Now, <clears throat> the Power Pack Design tools, these are again very, very similar to the tools you'll see with the um, on the advanced design side in terms of the design modules so similar tools on both sides for the design however you can take it to the next level with power pack detailing in revit okay so power pack design and now let's calculate but it's generating the reinforcement now uh, on these three columns i've selected okay and there we go and it's generated some uh, reinforcement there there we go. And that's based on the results we had from advanced design. So if I select that, we have a package. There we go. Uh, quantity of three in that package for the links. Now let's do the same for this beam. There we go. So we have now also got some reinforcement for this beam. The same we can do for the front here. So typically <clears throat> we would generate the um, reinforcement based on the results. And then through the power pack detailing, we can take that to the next level to modify and uh, by modifying these reinforcement cages. There we go. So 
So you can see just how quickly I've gone from the original model um, in Revit and then taken to Advanced Design and analyzed it. In Advanced Design, I can then also change section sizes, change the loads, run an analysis, and then export not only the FEM results, you can also export back the theoretical reinforcement and then import the results in Revit and then generate reinforcement cages based on that information. So that is as simple as it should be really. So a very nice workflow that we have here. So do we have any questions? That brings us to the, to the end of uh, the webinar there. And if we have any questions, uh, please post these questions in the questions pane or the chat box. I will now um, open up for a Q&A session. If anybody has any questions, I'll allow some time for you to come up with these questions. And then I'll look at uh, concluding this webinar. So please, if you have any questions, post them in the questions pane now. Okay, so it looks like there aren't any questions at this time. If you do have any questions, you have my email address on this handout, which is jamil.dida at greatech.com. So please send me any questions on there. So just before we go away, um, the Twilight Week is now coming to an end. We'll look at uh, concluding this uh, Twilight Week with uh, having, looking at, having a look at designing a concrete structure with Revit and Advanced Design. So it's building upon what we looked at today. So today we looked at one workflow. Tomorrow we'll be looking at another workflow uh, where we'll be using the design modules in Advanced Design for concrete elements. So make sure you uh, tune in for that one tomorrow at the same time at half past five. Um, and I look forward to see you then. So thank you for joining me today on uh, today's webinar. And as always, Please follow us on social media. We always have the latest, um, we always update our pages on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube with content um, for you guys. Okay, so once again, it's bye for now, and I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow.